Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in what I call English and I'm your host Mr. Z. For those of you who don't know us yet, you will come back, I'm pretty sure. We do very in-depth car reviews and we are very detailed so our reviews are pretty long but don't worry because in the description of this very video you find jump markers our clips are always divided in uh, several chapters and you can jump from chapter to chapter if you're not interested or watch two chapters today and the other ones later on besides that in the description of this video you find all the technical data about this car and maybe some other links to reviews of competitors and by the way this indeed is a 2015 Dodge Charger SRT well if I hear Dodge Charger all I'm thinking of is the very older models you know the movie stars from Fast and Furious 1 you know Vin Diesel driving this black monster or maybe Bullet you know the big chase well this muscle car was built from 1966 to 1974 only Afterwards, from 75 to 78, uh, Chrysler built a model, a very uh, luxury coupe uh, called Dodge Charger as well, but it didn't have anything to do with a muscle car. Then the name totally disappeared for, uh, for a few years, and from 83 to 87, a compact coupe was built with the same name. It took Chrysler till 2006, and then they finally introduced a new Dodge Charger. It was not like everyone expected a two door coupe, but they made a sedan. Well, actually, for me, it's more a uh, Cooper like sedan with four doors, to be honest. And most important, the Charger got power again. Now, I wouldn't call it a muscle car, but it's at least a very, very sporty sedan. Well, for me as a German, it's extremely hard to review an American car. Because, first of all, even in Germany, we got US car nerds, you know? And they were probably, you know, tell me that I have no idea about the cars, that I know nothing about American cars, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. On the other hand, we got, you know, the Germans or the Europeans, you know, that say, well, American cars, they're not worth anything, you know. They are not made probably, it's all plastic, and it's just a big engine can go straight. Well, I'm trying to reach everyone between those two groups, and I would just tell you how I enjoyed the car, what I think about the car. Um, it's hard for me to find competitors indeed, because um, I would say the Chevrolet Camaro, but this one is rather competing with the uh, Dodge Challenger and has just two doors. Same with the Ford Mustang, two doors only. So I would even jump into uh, the German car market and say, well, let's compare it to the BMW M5 and the Mercedes E63 AMG. AEC Europe, they're offering the Charger in Europe with three different uh, powertrains. First of all, we have the Charger Rally, which comes with a V6 and a capacity of 3.6 liters, having 304 horses. Then we have got the Charger RT and SRT. Uh, they both have the 6.4 liter V8 with 492 horses. And above we got the Charger SRT Hellcat baby and the Hellcat has a 6.2 liter V8 with a compressor and it's good for 707 horses. All Charger models come with rear wheel drive and an 8 speed automatic transmission. And by the way, RT, the Charger RT, that stands for road and track, while SRT stands for street and racing technology. That's just two different trim, trim levels. And here's the heart of our test car. It's a 6.4 liter V8, 392 Hemi, and it's good for 492 horses. And a maximum torque of 644 newton meters and you get them starting at 4200 rpm and of course our charger as well has rear wheel drive and the 8-speed automatic transmission
The Dodge Charger SRT is accelerating from 0 to 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds. And the top speed is reached at 282 km per hour or 175 miles per hour. The gas tank of the 2015 Dodge Charger SRT is good for 70 liters equals 18.5 gallons. Dodge claims the fuel consumption of 15.5 liters on 100 km or 15.2 miles per gallon, which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 450 kilometers or 280 miles without getting gas. In terms of CO2 emissions, the Dodge Charger SRT 392 sets free 380 grams per kilometer, according to Dodge. The Dodge Charger had a length of 5.1 meters or 204 inches, with a wheelbase of 3. 0.06 meters which equals 120 inches. It is 1.48 meters high so 58 inches and it is 1.91 uh, meters wide which equals 75 inches. As of the turning circle you need at least 11.6 meters or 38.1 feet of free space. The curb weight is 1,996 kilograms or 4,400 pounds. The admissible total weight is 2,472 kilograms, which equals 5,450 pounds. In Germany, our test car would cost around about 77,000 euros. I already told you about the three different powertrains uh, that AEC Europe is offering here in Europe for us with the Dodge Charger. And most likely they resemble the different trim levels as well. You have the, uh, the choice between four different trim levels, but they are hooked to the very engine of the car. So the SRT has a different trim level from the RT, but they share the same engine, while the others have even another engine, but the trim level differ as well. If you're really interested in the Dodge Charger, I recommend that you download the brochure of one of the dealer's homepages and you will see everything very detailed uh, listed there in the brochure. However, all the European models come with big xenon headlights and LED day running light as well as LED fog lights. In Europe you have the choice between 10 different colors. Our color is called Red Line Red Tree Coat Pearl and it's a cost extra, it's an option, uh, but there are some colors that come for free. Um, by the way, just have to touch the uh, Hemi battery quick. The car stands on 20 inch alloys and in Europe they are coated sort of uh, with uh, Pirelli P0, so their performance tire in the dimension 275 slash 40. Uh, by the way, in the front as well as in the back, so same size for both axes. Um, we have a Brembo braking system on the Charger SRT with six brake pistons in the front and four in the back. Well, ages ago, ages, I was an exchange student in Kentucky, spent there one year and that, you know, gave me this passion for American cars. I like them, I really do. And starts out with this little... <laughs> lamp right here what for you know no german car would have a light right here but it's cool i like it you know and then this band across the whole back of the charger you know this light band that's cool isn't it i mean it's really cool no german car would have this but here we got it and i like it i really do i'm sorry you know that's cool in my my opinion at least. I'm not 100% sure about what kind of uh, light technique we find in the real lights. Uh, I think it's LED. The turning signal looks rather like normal light bulbs, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me know what you think or maybe Hello America, can you tell us? Can you tell the dumb stupid German uh, what kind of technology is in here? Um, here we have the SRT batch again and down there two big big pipes and they are good for really good sound. I promise you will hear some later on. 
Well, the Dodge Charger for sure is no compact car, but look at this door, isn't it huge? It opens in an 85 degree angle and so I have lots of space to jump inside and I would like to invite you to follow me inside. So this big frame makes entering the car really easy as you see, but now if I really open the door that wide I have to really not really wide. <laughs> Welcome in the interior of the Dodge Charger SRT. Well, we Germans, we always have this prejudice um, that uh, the interior of American cars is just plastic, plastic, plastic. You know, a whole desert full of plastics. So when my uh, best friend jumped in the car and took a ride with me, he was like, oh yeah, see plastic. And then he touched it and I was, oh, it's even soft touch. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised. So the whole dashboard is covered with black soft touch touch and uh, it even goes down until here and um, where well, the lid of the ghost compartment is hard plastics and uh, here we got some yeah, application I, I can't even describe what it is but um, it's fine I don't think it looks too cheap or you know stocked up German say uh, well you know sleazy or whatever I like the interior actually because it uh, lets me or allows me to focus on what's going on with the car. It's a driver's car. It's not like for lifestyle sitting around and fiddling around with the interior. So that's okay with me and I like it. Um, besides in the door panels we have even close and here it's soft touch again and well down there it starts with hard plastic but it's fine I guess. Here we have even artificial leather. The seats are covered with uh, Alcantara and uh, it's fine with me. I, it would work for me for sure. I have enough space. I'm 180 centimeters tall so 511. I have no problems finding a good sitting position. I can well, barely put a fist between uh, my head and the ceiling, but we have a uh, sunroof here, so the ceiling comes down a bit. Then uh, for cars that don't have a sunroof. Um, so I had no problems, and there's enough space to the side as well. So you, you don't feel, it, it doesn't look like a spacious car, but you have the space. That's important. Um, but it's easy for me since I'm not so tall to sit in here properly and I would invite Toby to sit on the driver's seat and show you how it feels to sit in the Dodge Charger when you're 195 centimeters tall, so 6'5". Come on, Toby. Thanks, Jan. Hello, guys. Now I'll tell you how I can sit in here. I had um, no problems finding a good sitting position in here. Um, the hatchback headspace is very limited because of the of the sunroof and I'm um, touching the ceiling with my with my hair but that's okay I can reach easily the headrest and um, everything else is just in place and fine I can reach the pedals the steering wheel that's okay well thanks Toby a uh, good insight for all the tall people around there um Talking about using the car, uh, the center console is not facing me. Uh, that's a little bit sad, but that's okay. I can reach everything fine. All the switches and button make sense. So I got uh, used to driving this car pretty fast. No surprise, everything was right in place. Yeah, well, that starts with our normal routine. You can adjust the safety belt height on your shoulder. The safety belts even are even red and uh, that's about the size they have. I was wondering, I thought American cars would have longer safety belts. Um, the seats are not only really comfortable, we've driven uh, down here from Bielefeld to Munich around about 600 kilometers straight away and had no problems with the seat at all. So they're comfortable on one hand and on the other hand they really support your sporty driving. You've got a lot of side support, even you can't adjust it on the cushion as well as on your back. And um, they're big, they're huge, they're massive, it's like, you know, a chair you could have in the living room uh, on one hand but then they're really nice and comfortable sporty seats I, I, I like them and I like the Alcantara as well you can heat them up and cool them down and not the same time all, all you have to do is um, control it over the Uconet in infotainment system so you can heat them up cool them down and uh, both in two intensities. You can adjust them electrically all the way and you even have an electric lumbar support. So it's really comfortable. I like them. Really handy. Good. The steering wheel. 
Uh, you can adjust it electrically and it takes a while for sure because you know it always takes a while but as you might be able to see already uh, you really have a lot of a uh, way to adjust it right in the place where you want to have it and since toby and i are sitting in a very different way in the car it's neat to have such a radius to uh, find the right setting for you okay let's adjust it it's uh, coated with leather or it's a leather steering wheel and the leather adds the uh, uh, places where you put your hands as even perforated which I like because when, once you get sweaty hand it's easier to drive this way. You have shifting pedals up here, they're even out of metal or at least they feel like metal which is really nice and you can use them uh, pretty easy. And uh, down at the end of the um, pedals, you even have little buttons. I haven't figured out what the one is for on the uh, left side. The right side is to switch between the different sources of the Uconnect infotainment system. Um, we have a lot of buttons on the steering wheel as well. So it's a multifunctional steering wheel. On the right side, we have uh, the control over the board computer. And on the lower part, we can... Uh, do voice commands and hang up and um, pick up the phone. On the right side, we can control the um, cruise control, while on the lower part, there's a button for the speed limiter and for uh, keeping distance. So it's supposed to be an adaptive cruise control. It didn't work for us. Maybe it's broken in this test car. I'm not pretty sure. Uh, I had the feeling it was not working. So whenever I counted a car with my set speed, I was just going closer and closer and closer till I finally hit the brake. Well, okay. Um, I like the steering wheel. Feels good. Toby says it's too uh, thick for him. Well, yeah, different people, different opinions. That's that's cool. And we have the charge as uh, the SRT badge on the steering wheel on the honk uh, button as well. Okay, uh, the mirrors are pretty small in comparison to the whole car. I mean, we have a huge car and really tiny mirrors. The mirror is uh, just as big as my hand. Still, I think uh, you see enough from the uh, traffic behind you. And um, in the inner mirror, you see the whole window, uh, the whole rear window, except the part on the left side. And that's because my head is in, ooh, is in uh, the way. Altogether, you get a good idea what's going on behind. If I turn my head around uh, my left shoulder, I uh, see the B-pillar, but it's not too big, no blind spot here. If I turn my head around the right shoulder, you know, the checkup uh, view, the B-pillar is fine and the C-pillar is pretty big. No discussion, it's due to the cuba-like shape and there is a blind spot for sure, but if you use a mirror first and then, you know, in one direction, there shouldn't be a blind spot for you. Um, so overall, I don't think, uh, I really think you have a good overview in this car. For parking, uh, to support your parking uh, tries, you have a rear camera. And a good friend of mine who drove this car said, well, it looks like an old TV from the 70s. The picture does. It covers the whole screen. Uh, you have lines where you're driving. This is good. But the picture is really noisy and, and not very sharp. And especially when it rains, you hardly see anything. And during nighttime, it, uh, well, they could improve it a lot just getting another camera for the rear, I guess. And the cover, uh, camera is not protected against rain or mud or whatever. Okay, um, behind the steering wheel, we have the round gauges, very classic design on the left side. We have this uh, RPM meter going up to 7000 RPM, while the red range starts at 6000 RPM. On the right side, we have the speedometer, in our case, uh, kilometers per hour up to 300 kilometers per hour. The car runs 280, so that's a good scale. And in between, we have a pretty big display. And uh, first of all, an, 
attached to the RPM meter, we find a little uh, display for the uh, water temperature of the car on the right side. Attached to the speedometer, there's a, uh, how much was the fuel tank uh, gauge. Um, on the upper part, we have three different sections. We can uh, put different values in each of them and you can choose yourself what you want to see, the time, uh, the range, the average fuel consumption, the current fuel consumption, trip A, trip B, nothing even, uh, compass or the outside temperature. And you can put this up for all three uh, slots. Uh, then in the very lower part we see uh, how much mileage the car has already. In our case, uh, wow, it's 6,666 right now. I think that's kind of cute. You can enable and disable this as well as you can tell uh, the display to show you the current gear you're driving in, which shows at the, um, attached to the speedometer on the uh, right side. So uh, that's neat too. Then, then we have the board computer itself and it's so much information you get there. First of all, it's a, a digital speed and I really like it. I really think they did an awesome job displaying the speed. Uh, most cars that I know that have this um, digital stuff, they hop from, you know, 20 to 25 to 27 to 35 in terms of uh, how you accelerate right then. And... Um, this is really seamless. It shows you seamless your current speed and I think that's awesome. That's an awesome job. I haven't seen this uh, at any other uh, manufacturer so far. Then we have uh, uh, all the vehicle infos we want to use, the engine power that is used. Uh, then we have uh, the vehicle info, a bunch of slots where can um, click through. So we have the tire pressure, Coolant temperature, trans temperature, transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, oil life, um, battery voltage and intake air temperature. So if you're really into this stuff, you get a lot of information that you can use. Then we have a performance page where we can... Uh, where we can see uh, what we can do uh, or put different timers. I haven't really understand it. Uh, we can, you know, measure the braking way. We see the G forces, the maximum G forces, and some lap timer stuff. And the current top speed or the top speed you have uh, reached until you uh, do a reset. And in our case, it's 272 kilometers per hour. Two pages for fuel economy and uh, two pages for a trip info you can store different uh, two different trips uh, the audio settings what's what's going on in the radio or usb uh, messages from the car to you i guess uh, you can set up the screen that's what i told you earlier a speed warning you can set a speed uh, and get a warning whenever something happens and uh, then a screen for the diagnostics and back again to the speedometer. That's one part, but we have another part. Here's an SRT button, and uh, once you start the U Connect, you get a, S a SRT button here on on here as well. So we have one uh, vision for the different driving modes, and then we got an app uh, called Performance Pages. And here, first of all, you can see your car itself. Pretty neat, different views. Uh, you have a page for all the different timers. You see one set of gauges, uh, coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure on the first page and the second page, battery voltage, intake air temperature and transmission temperature. Another page for the G-forces and one uh, page that I really like is called engine where you get all the information, how much horsepower is uh, currently used, how much torque the car is using right now, the current gear you're in, uh, the oil pressure and the current speed that's pretty neat it's too much information to really get it uh, while you're driving but at least for the passenger that's pretty neat to have yeah <clears throat> that's uh, it from this side both displays you can read easily during day and night time that's pretty neat uh, and uh, the infotainment system is really neat except of the rear camera the, I told you the camera is really yucky okay uh, 
that's it from uh, this side. Uh, we do have a sort of pseudo ambient light. Um, if the, the door panels are illuminated with white light a little bit, the foot compartment is illuminated, and we have some rings at the cup holders as well. As an option, you get a, a sunroof that you can open, close, and lift up. And um, the car has a horn as well. Sounds like this. All right, and on we go with our compartment check here in the Dodge Charger SRT. In the door panels, we have enough space for this half a liter bottle, maybe a um, 0.75 liter bottle fit in here, but not a liter bottle for sure. Behind that, we have some more stuff, uh, some more space, but this whole compartment is just hard plastic. So if you put something in here, which is scooting around, it will make noise. That's annoying noises, I guess. Nothing here. Then um, in front of the stick we have a compartment. Not really anti-slip surface, however my iPhone fits in here pretty well. And next to it a 12 volt outlet. This is my favorite compartment. Um, you can lift the rubber thing off. It says uh, Dodge Brothers designed in Detroit. I like it and the key fits in here pretty well. Then we have the cup holders. If you don't use them you can close it down and otherwise um, it has a force each, each has four uh, three spacers so this bottle fits in here pretty well it's not shaking around too much i think uh, the bottles are not allowed to be much bigger maybe a, a 0.75 liter bottle would fill it would fit in here as well as well some uh, starbucks cups i guess and if you're a smoker you can put an ashtray in here as well well we're not smoking in the car <clears throat> you cannot adjust the armrest in any ways, which is not bad because you have to have your um, hands on the steering wheel as well. As well. There's a little uh, slider thing in here. I think you can put, could, can put coins in there. And below that we find another 12 volt outlet, uh, an SD card slot, a USB plug and um, an aux in line in function. And it's pretty huge. So is the gloves compartment. Uh, it's divided in two sections, an upper part where a bunch of stuff will fit in and uh, the regular lower part. And I think that's one of the biggest compartments I've seen so far. I like it. We got sunshades, uh, shields, and you can slide them on one hand and then you can even extend them this way. In both uh, sides we have a makeup mirror which is illuminated with regular light boobs, not very bright, uh, but the mirror is pretty big. And you have a ticket holder right on the other side. We have a um, compartment for your shades or your glasses and inside is even some, um, yeah, some stuff which is preventing the things from shaking around. We have reading lights for the driver and the passenger and even an option to extend the light to get some more light in here. Then there are handles on all four doors and that's pretty much it. Well, while the original Dodge Charger's muscle car was a two-door cube, we have four doors here and so I will check out the rear bench for you. Well, I have to really nod my head that I don't, you know, crash it right here. But whenever I'm sitting inside, it's easy to close the door. So welcome in the back. Um, I'm sitting like in the living room, really. I have lots of uh, space for my legs. The seats are really comfortable. Alcantara as well, a little bit formed out and uh, only the headrest is not adjustable. But besides that, I'm really sitting nice and easy. I'm wondering, you know, I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". How is Toby sitting in here with, with, with his 195 centimeters, uh, so 6'5". Come on, Toby, let's show us. Okay, guys, uh, the driver's seat is put in Jan's position. He's 185 centimeters tall, so 5'11". I'm 195 centimeters tall, so 6'5". And I have to say that 
here's not that much space. Like headspace, I have nearly no headspace. I uh, can't even reach the, the the headrest. When I try to to push my head back to reach the headrest, then I'm touching the the uh, back window, and um, well, the leg space is very limited because of this this plastic thing here at the back of the seat. And yeah, that's not very good. Well, thanks, Toby, especially for making me a little bit taller than I am, and. Um yeah, let's uh, now look around what we got here on compartments. In the door panels, we got another space for this half a liter bottle or 0.75 liter bottles and another little compartment. In the back of the seats, we have a little bag for magazines, comics, whatever. Um, in the middle console, we have two air outlets, pretty small by the way, and um, heatings for the two outer seats, uh, so seat heatings. That's pretty neat. Two intensities even. Plus two USB ports. I mean really German manufacturers learn from this. Two USB ports just uh, for the rear bench I think both thumbs up. I like that. Um, that's an armrest so that folds down all the way. Here we have a little compartment hard plastic inside so might be a little bit noisy and two cup holders again illuminated uh, with a white stripe uh, and just two spacers but still this bottle fits in here pretty nice as well um, for the kids or the grown-ups who sit in the back that's the length of the seat belt the uh, locks for the seat belts are stiff so kids can buckle up themselves and we even got Evo Isofix, Isofix hooks. We have reading lights uh, behind the, the handle here, but no hooks for jacket whatsoever. I don't know why. And um, power driven windows that fold down completely. The view outside is limited. We have this big pillar right here and my head is, can even lean against it. Uh, but okay, we have a cube like sedan, so that's, you know, obvious that we have limited space. There's no automatic in the back and I'm very afraid. Ouch, no protection either. That sucks. I don't like that. Well, yeah, that's almost it. I can scoot in the middle real quick. Oh, it's cold. Well, I can sit here fine, except that I don't have any hate space anymore. That's probably how Toby feels. But besides that, it's comfortable and I'm not sitting on the uh, locks of the safety belt. So three people for my size can sit even in the rear, except the one in the middle should be a little bit smaller so he doesn't have problems with his um, head. Well, that's it. Dodge Charger SRT on the rear bench, babes. Before I show you the trunk, let's have a look at the key. On the back it says SRT, so here's the SRT badge and there's a little hook and I can release the key of uh, well, the real key. On the other side we have five buttons. I'm not pushing panic. I don't know, I don't want to. Then we have lock, unlock, uh, unlock the trunk, and what's that? Press two times. What the hell? Woohoo! Yes, you can start the engine remote. And you might want to think, well, we Europeans at least think, what the hell is going on? Why should you start a car with a key, remoteless, I don't know, with a remote? Well, in America, Everyone has its house with its driveway, the car is sitting in the driveway, it's pretty hot. So you just start the car from inside and when it's cooled down, when the air condition did its job, you can walk to the car, get in and drive away. Well, you know, it's not good for mother nature, but I understand life can be hard and why not making it a little bit comfortable, of course. Okay, um, the trunk. You can open the trunk either with a button next to the steering wheel on the left with this key with a remote or you just push this button right here and it opens. You have space for 467 liters of luggage or 18 cubic feet. And look, our tripod case fits in here. Well, not betwi between the wheels, I have to assume, but in front there's a larger space and it goes in this way as well, so we know at least the trunk is one meter 
deep, but I will give you the values in a minute. Let's have a look first. We have two lights that illuminate the trunk on each side one. Uh, we have two hooks for shopping bags whatsoever. You can hang on uh, bags up to 50 pounds or 22 kilograms. And you can lift the floor. And here we find a spare tire, well, an emergency spare tire, which you can use up to 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour. The battery, the warning triangle and the first aid kit we got here. And next to this net, which I don't think, I have no idea what it's good for, there's nothing else in the trunk. But what I like, it's all coated with clothes, you know. German, even the premium German manufacturer, if you have a sedan and you look right here in the trunk, <coughs> well, you see tin and um, here we have a coating and I really like it. It makes the trunk look a little bit nicer. What I like as well is that you can flip the rear bench, the, the backrest of the rear bench you can flip. And I used this already to put a bike in the car and it fit in there. That's pretty cool. Let me show you. Well, I just measured everything for you. Between uh, was the tightest place in width is uh, 79 centimeters so 38 inches while behind the wheels we have even space for 144 centimeters which is 56.5 inches and um, you have uh, it's it's a uh, 110 centimeters deep so 43 inches and if you flip the backrest uh, by the way, 40% on the right, 60% on the left. Then you have a length of 180 centimeters or 71 inches. Just because someone asked earlier in another review, this here, the part where you put things through, has a height of 36 centimeters, so 14 inches. And at the tightest space, it is only... 84 centimeters wide, so 33 inches. You can store up to 480 kilograms inside the Dodge Charger, which is around about 1,058 pounds. And if you want to load something in the trunk, ouch, you have to lift it up 76 centimeters or 30 inch, and then drop down 23 centimeters or 9 inches and uh, just to give you the value the frame from the trunk is 110 centimeters so 43 inches wide and difference between here and then is around about 48 centimeters so 19 inches um, people complained as far as i read about the uh, the lid opening too high you can't reach it you know but there's a grip right here and you can easily close it down but you get dirty hands this way uh, well i haven't found a value if you can put something on the roof and i don't think that you can pull trailers with a charge at least not in germany slash europe <laughs> All right, I would like to share my driving expressions with the Dodge Charger SRT with you guys. First of all, we got this big 6.4 liter VA with 492 horses under the hood. And all the torque, all the 600 or up to 644 uh, Newton meters go on the rear axis. Today, it was the first day where we have the Charger that it, it, it rained overnight and it's slightly raining uh, all day since then that was the day we did the driving uh, scenes for our review and i was so frustrated because i had fun with it with the car but it was a wet road really um the, the rear comes pretty fast and so i rather drove really carefully instead of you know showing off and letting you enjoy the engine uh, much more than i uh, well, the way I wanted you to, the sound of the engine. However, once the road is dry, the car is pretty neat to handle. Uh, you have to press this SRT button to get to the different driving modes. We got track, sport, custom and default. Track is for track, obviously, and sport a little bit uh, more severe than track. 
um, while track disabled the stability program, Sport just reduced it and it's uh, activated in custom and default. Um, I like the custom function because the steering on, st on the street setting is just too, uh, yeah, too much regular car for me. So I liked it in sport or even in track where it got pretty hard. The steering got hard and this way even pretty direct. Uh, the suspension is pretty um, comfortable in, uh, st in the street setting and gets really stiff in the track setting. So sport is a pretty good compromise in between once you drive fast. If you just cruise like I do now with uh, 100 km per hour, the street setting is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, by the way, the adaptive, uh, adaptive suspension is made by Bielstein, German company. Thumbs up. Um, you can enable or disable the function of the, uh, of the shifting pedals, which might make sense if you want to put the car for someone who is not used to this. And you can uh, put the um, transmission in either track sport and uh, street, or you have even an eco button. So you can put your custom setting with everything you want and still press the eco button and the eco button puts the suspension in eco mode so it shifts earlier, it reduces the sound of the car, it reduces of course then the RPM <coughs> and um, it works with cylinders on demand. So if you don't need the power it runs with four cylinders instead of the which enabled us to get as close as the fuel consumption the manufacturer says uh, well, Dodge says 15.5 uh, liters in 100 kilometers, and we did over a period of 1,000 kilometers 16 liters. Well, 16 liters is quite a lot, but we are really close to the fuel consumption the manufacturers told us. Yeah, the noise level, I think, really wind noises start around about 120 kilometers per hour, and uh, <coughs> the car gets obviously louder the faster you go. Uh, once you go uh, over 200, it is indeed pretty loud, but you still have a conversation. Uh, once you press the eco button, the whole um, exhort noise level is reduced as well. Just uh, I'm going just 70 kilometers per hour. So it's always shifting up and uh, reducing the level of noise. So I was always driving with eco inside the city because I don't want to disturb other people uh, because, you know, I'm a, a nice guy. But once you're outside the city, you just disable the eco function and then you can let it go, you know. And that is really fun. The, the whole noise, the sound of the exit system is really always makes me smile. Really, that's, that's awesome. Well, we got a Brembo braking system, works with Charm. I had no problems at all using it or slowing down the car whenever I wanted to. I never had to do an emergency brake, but when I was driving a little bit sporty uh, a couple of days ago, you know, a curvy road, like going really hard in the brakes and then accelerating out of the curb worked fine with me, so I'm very pleased. Uh, the suspension out of uh, an 8-speed uh, automatic transmission, you always feel it. It's not like seamless shifting. And I'm not talking about, you know, in track mode where you want to really feel the suspension. Rather in street mode or even with eco, you feel when it shifts. It's, uh, I don't mind, but it's just remarkable, I guess. And um, just overall, driving is fun. It's really fun, it uh, brightens my day to drive the Challenge, uh, Charger RS, uh, SRT. To drive the Charger SRT makes me smile big time. We even have a couple assist systems in here. We have a blind spot warner, worked fine. We have a, a lane keeping assist that I thought was pretty interesting because it's just really carefully being on the active part. It supports your steerings. Uh, but really carefully, which I like, so that you hardly notice it, uh, instead of other systems that are being so rude that you are 
kind of scared that the car is taking over control. So that's fine. We we're supposed to have an adaptive cruise control. For some reason, it didn't work for us. I don't know why. I have no idea. Maybe it's not uh, okay, or um, I just did something wrong. I don't know. Can't tell you anything about this. Um, the Uconet infotainment system is quite interesting. Uh, the screen is responsive, the system is not. You know, you press a button, you see the screen recognizes the button, but the system takes a while to really do whatever you want it. Overall, I had no problems with the system. I think it's uh, good to use and um, easy to handle. Uh, besides that, we have this Harman Kardon premium sound system in here, which is good if you like hip hop, because it's really um, bass um, focused. But once you listen to other stuff like you know uh, songwriters or even classic, the bass is uh, the bass is too massive. But it's okay. I mean, for just daily driving, it's fine. I'm done with the charger, man. No, just kidding. I'm done with the review. Let me sum all, all up. Well, at least sum up our impressions of the Dodge Charger SRT 392. Did we have fun? Driving fun is our first category. Yes. Toby is all excited. He's like, yeah, man, rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. That's a fucking great car. Yeah. I say, yeah, it's a fun car. I really had fun driving it. Really, sound is amazing. The power is amazing. And even the suspension, the Bielstein suspension is uh, really good. I liked it. I enjoyed driving this car on the Autobahn. I haven't been on track. Can't really tell you how it's doing on track. But in daily life, it's really a fun car. Well, usage as a daily driver. For grown-ups, my size can fit in the car not only all right, but comfortable. You know, you can do long distance travel comfortable if you're not taller than I am. And you even have a full size trunk for all your luggage, which I like. So daily driver, yes, it is cool daily driver. Uh, comfort. Is it a comfortable car? Well, the suspension at least has a street setting and this street setting is comfortable enough for driving around. So are the seats. Uh, they're comfortable as well. So I would say comfortable as well. Last but not least, fuel consumption. Dodge says, well, fuel consumption is 15.5 liters on 100 kilometers. We've driven 1000 kilometers and we had an average fuel consumption, fuel consumption of 16 liters on 100 kilometers. So we haven't ever got so close to what the manufacturer says. Just half a liter. And uh, I've driven on the Autobahn. I was not speeding, you know, all, to, uh, all, all the way. I haven't reached top speed at all, but I was going uh, on cruise control, 170 kilometers per hour, um, most of the time, sometimes 140. I speeded up to uh, 240, 50 when the, uh, when the Autobahn was all free for us. So uh, I did not drive really slow. Yes, we had uh, some some uh, parts where we drove 120, 140 because there was a speed limit. Uh, we've driven the car in town as well. And we started it right here about 20 times, I guess, which always sucks fuel as well. But we end up with a fuel consumption of 16 liters. And I think that's great. 16 liters itself is awful, you know, Mother Nature, please save Mother Earth. But if you're willing to buy a V8, this is at least a reliable number, 16 liters on 100 kilometers. I think it's okay for a V8. Okay, all in all, uh, we are pretty surprised we like the car, really. We're not surprised that we like the car, but we are surprised how much we like the car. That's it. Okay, if you have any questions to our test, please put them below in the comments. If you want to read more about the cars and if, if they're available in your country, connect this address. It's down in the video description as well. I just want to add because I named the company a couple of times because they're the companies that gave us this car, you know. We don't get any money. We are not paid or anything else. Um, 
yeah, well, if you have any questions down in the comments, if you like this review, give us a like, please. If you really like this clip, share it, please, on your social networks, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, or put it in your personal private playlist on YouTube. This all helps us uh, to be more visible on YouTube and grow. If you really like our format, please tell your colleagues, your friends, your family, uh, whoever, about our format, because we would really love to have more uh, visitors uh, making our channel bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. World leadership, you know? And um, if you want to support us, you can by now. We are offering uh, Patreon and Tippy. So if you want to give us some money, you know, so we can buy some stuff to make our clips even better, use the services all linked in the video description. Well, that's it. I guess. Uh, I'm saying goodbye. I'm your host, Mr. Z. Please tune back in next time when we're sending another English clip. And all the European models come with big scene on headlights, LED running light. Day running light? Scheiße. Those four trim levels. Ne, auch nicht. Left. I used to live in Kentucky for one year as an exchange student when I was, you know. Uh, das Licht ist ausgegangen. Oh.